string theory is kind of pushing the bounds of what we understand about nature. And so many of the things that we seem to be discovering, which are still are in the hypothetical stage, uh, seem, may seem more like science fiction than science. And I think a lot of aspects of that are mirrored. I was actually really intrigued to see how some of these ideas come out in the art. For instance, in, in Paul Andrade's uh, piece called Elephant, he's got a large constellation of different works coming together with different patterns in them, which for me is very reminiscent of one of the ideas coming out of string theory, which is that the universe may be much bigger than we ever thought with different kinds of physics happening in different regions within that larger universe so that we would be living just in one patch in a large patchwork quilt made up of many different kinds of things going on in that larger universe. And his piece really has that flavor to it of a large patchwork quilt with lots of different kinds of smaller scale structures in it which could represent the, the individual regions of the universe that we might live in, for instance. So that some of these ideas which are very far out in string theory are very nicely mirrored in the, in the artwork and the landscape also with, with Bill Fries's work with the billowing landscape really brings to mind some of the imagery of, of some of the things we're struggling to understand right now in the string theory context. I think in the history of art, art plays a lot of different roles. One of the roles is to play a role sociologically in kind of interpreting what's happening in society. But another big part of art, I think, is to help present our image of nature. So a lot of historical art had to do with how humans view nature. And I think that string theory right now, up to recent, you know, has been very far away from what common experience of science has familiarized people with. And so there's been fewer artists who are familiar enough with the ideas to be able to take a stab at trying to represent some of these things which are very difficult to put into even non-representational art. And so I think it's kind of exciting that a range of artists are trying to take some of these ideas and build some kind of a representation of these, of these things, which I think help everyone, including the scientists, understand what might be a good way to think about or Im imagine or um, picture some of these things that are going on. I think the art plays a big role in making the ideas more understandable. For instance, this notion of a landscape having some artistic representation of that, I think, really helps give people who haven't followed the math or who don't really want to understand a lot of details about what's going on some kind of visual image to take away saying, oh, this is what it's like. Like, again, I really like Paul Andrade's piece with all this stuff in it because describing the landscape of a big universe with different things happening in different regions, you can kind of point at that piece and say, you know, maybe it's a little bit like that and it gives people something to attach an image to. Now as to whether it will have anything to do with string theory being more accepted, I think that is really more of a scientific question and it's more a question of what kinds of stringent tests or you know how you can compare string theory to other kinds of ways of describing gravity and quantum mechanics, which is what we're trying to do with string theory. So I would say on the, on the understanding side, I see the artist playing a bigger role than on the acceptance side. Mm -hmm. Throughout history, there's been a strong connection between artists and scientists. Many artists are scientists. I mean, they think and work very similar ways. They, they research ideas, they, they test them out, they produce uh, results. And uh, I think the major difference is where it's done in the context that it's in. And the same with scientists. I mean, there are a lot of scientists who try to work, work out creative solutions to problems. And when they go through a similar process of this trial and experiment and producing lots of things that don't work, but eventually they find something that does. Each of the four artists in the show have researched and studied string theory on their own and have been working with it for some time in their artwork. But each of them are doing completely different things with it. They're all taking different sections of string theory, whether it's analyzing the dimensions and the brains of string theory, or whether it's gravity or the overall concept of space and time and, and interpreting it in their own way. The scientists and the artists share, although one's on the right and one's on the left side of the brain. I think as artists, uh, we're attracted to different uh, scientific theories and to explore it as an artist is, is just a wonderful undertaking. I was very positive to find other artists who had the same interests as I did in string theories. The answers can be given scientifically, but it can also be given artistically. My paintings are based on subatomic particles, the tracks that they lead. Blue Sea and Fire in the Mountain were my first endeavors to paint different layers of the subatomic particles, the tracks themselves. You have three layers on Fire in the Mountain and only one layer with a background color on the Blue Sea. The other three pieces, which are the smaller pieces, they are subatomic.
atomic tracks that are serographed, and they're placed within a diffused atmosphere that I created with glass to show vibrations. The vibrations are part of the bands which make up string theory. Everything is harmonizing bands of energy. And when you were to look at those three smaller pieces, it actually changes almost like a holographic effect. Artists have always gravitated towards something bigger than ourselves. And this is something that interested me, and I was interested to find other artists were as concerned about it as I was. Like they'd say, art is impossible without science, and scientists couldn't live without art. <laughs> Uh, I studied um, sort of higher level math, mm -hmm. but what I use in my music is um, more like um, advanced high school math. But because I studied higher level math, the high school math is easier for me, yeah. But I use it a lot. Uh, almost all the, way, all the different ways that I think about music are mathematical. One way is in combinations of things. I'm very interested in uh, selecting many different ideas and then playing them back in different combinations. So. I like to think about all the possible combinations and select out combinations that um, are musically interesting or find symmetries in those combinations. That's one example. At the theater, I improvised, okay. but in the gallery, I did the installation, and that's all composed. And the difference between them is that that will always be the same, and what I did today will never happen again. When I think of string theory, the, the easiest part of it for me to understand is that strings are the most fundamental objects in the universe, and everything in the universe is made up one way or another from strings. And in the same way, in my music, uh, I use a method of creating sound which is called granular synthesis, which makes music up out of very, very small, short pulses of sound. And all of the music that I make is made up of these pulses. And I use actually mathematics to decide ex the exact nature of those pulses and how they get combined to make all the sounds. One of the uh, footholds that I used with, uh, with, with string theory, this um, unique uh, concept, was the idea that um, these, these small, minuscule loops uh, their shape can be somehow determined by, uh, by vibration. That's one of, one of the aspects. And I thought that was quite interesting, but at the same time, how would, how would, I, how would I express this? How do you express something, for example, that um, is near impossible to see by the human eye? And so I started to think of, well, what are, what are some other analogies? And the, uh, the one that struck me was this idea of uh, wind. We can't see wind. We can certainly see the uh, immediate after effects of wind, for example, maybe uh, a thin, uh, small gust on the water. Or for, um, in my case, I, I noticed one day a large uh, tarp affixed to uh, a building scaffolding and it seemed to, uh, for me, articulate uh, this invisible yet powerful uh, kinetic force. Another thing with the, with the tarp was this idea of, the, uh, of, of vibrations and how that can uh, articulate or um, inspire the shape of an object. String theory would be a loop in the case that uh, I was using to express the idea, it's more of the, the uh, tarp. I think these ideas kind of overlap and they spill over and I think that's essential um, for things to go further. The idea of uh, string theory, besides it being so um, such a minute 
investigation, large scale too, but also minute, it's remindful to me a little bit of kind of the artist's curiosity uh, turn of the century the, the, with futurism, this fascination with speed. And I think that, um, I think there's some type of maybe a postmodern parallel there um, that, I'm, that I'm quite curious about. Electronics and electronic sounds are a very recent development in the history of the world, and they're part of our modern and postmodern landscape. Uh, so I guess my interest as an artist is that uh, there is the sound of technology around us all the time, and so I'm interested in technology as, as an artist as our shadow. And one of, the re one of the ways that we can perceive technology as our shadow is the constant sonic environment that surrounds us from the technologies that we have in spaces that we inhabit. Well, string theory has been, is, has been a very generous container to show us different dimensions in spaces that we want to explore when we want to understand the space that we're in and objects that are in it. String theory is very, has been a very generous container for that because it's allowing for all kinds of combinations and all kinds of multiple understandings of what exists in a space. It's not so elegant in that it's sewn everything up. It has posing a lot of, has been posing a lot of questions. And I always find it interesting to pose questions about spaces. I am suspicious about things that um, elegantly and eloquently completely describe a space. Uh, and string theory is great because it's always uncovering new things and posing new questions. And that's what scientists and artists do. We're exploring spaces and trying to understand them and, ob and the way that objects appear in them. Thank <laughs> you.